again, thank you for being here. Uh, it's my distinct honor and privilege to present our speaker tonight. Uh, Serge Shoemaker is with us, as I mentioned in the prayer. And Serge is a very talented preacher. Serge is one of our own. Uh, he was raised at Robot Parkway. Of course, Tim and Donna Shoemaker is mom and dad and his sister Sarah, and they such a wonderful family and faithful. It was, it's still difficult for me to believe that Tim is no longer with us. Uh, he was just a, an icon of the word, and we're so thankful for him. We're thankful that Serge is following in his footsteps. And Serge and Heather live in Tennessee, and if you want the exact bio, I'm gonna let you get with Serge on that. But he, he's a preacher in Tennessee, I know that. And uh, we're glad to have him here. Without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Serge. It was the perfect dinner, or at least it sure seemed to be. The invited guest of honor had come. Everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves, having a good time as the situation and the circumstances would seem to dictate. And then she showed up. Her mere presence at such a prestigious gathering was a shock. You see, she had a reputation, and it wasn't a good one. Everybody in the town, everybody at the dinner knew exactly what kind of woman she was. Everyone except, it seemed, the guest of honor. But if her presence was a shock, then her actions were a scandal. Because she came to that chief guest and took hold of his feet. And she didn't just hold on to them, she wept over them. She kissed them. And then perhaps realizing just what a mess she was making, she looked for something to dry these feet with, and finding nothing at hand, she went to the only thing she could use, her hair. And then she returned to the reason she came. She took out a cruise of ointment and she anointed this guest, but not on his head, which would have been customary. Rather, she poured out this costly perfume over his feet. Can you imagine the scene at that moment? Can, can you mentally interject yourself there as maybe another guest at the table watching this happen or a servant shuffling back and forth between the table and kitchen and you, you catch this interaction out the corner of your eye? I imagine the room went eerily quiet. That where once there had been conversation and laughter like that, everyone was silent, just watching. Many, I imagine, watching with gaping mouths. How could she be here? How could she do that? Making a scene like this, it was shameful. It was disgusting, and everybody is waiting for the recipient of her actions to respond. And many of them were expecting him not just to respond, but to put this woman in her rightful place. How dare you touch me? The most curious onlooker was the host. He is the one who had invited this man as guest of honor, but he was also skeptical of him. And so he was very, very curious to see how he would respond to this scandalous display. Finally, the guest does speak, and he does offer a rebuke, but it's not to the groveling woman at his feet. Her actions may have seemed taboo, but he says they've actually, far from being shameful, have gone above and beyond. And so he looks directly at his host and says to him, I entered your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. 
What prompted this vastly different response between the respectful host and this reprehensible woman? Well, the guest further explains, Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. In a moment, we're going to look at this principle in much more detail in our main study. But for the moment, I want us to satisfy ourselves with the fact that forgiveness, even for those whose sins are many, forgiveness is possible when we throw ourselves at the feet of Jesus Christ. And what was the response for this woman? Our Lord said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. How many people do you think left this shocking display at this banquet in peace? I suspect not many. And I also suspect no one left with greater peace than this woman. And here's the great glorious thing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same peace is available for us when we respond in faith. A faith that motivates us to do as Christ asked. So what did he ask? He asked us to believe in Him as the Son of God. Unless you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins, John 8 and verse 24. He asked us to make a public confession of that faith. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge Him before my Father who is in heaven, Matthew 10 and verse 32. He asked us to renounce our former behaviors, what we call repentance. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish, Luke 13 and verse 3. And he asked us to be immersed in water for the forgiveness of our sins, saying, Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved, Mark 16 and verse 16. It's not a complicated formula. It's not a complicated instruction. The only question is, have you done those things? And if not, will you do so tonight? And if you have done those things, I remind you there's one more thing our Lord asks of us, to live faithfully unto him. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Our Lord's forgiveness and your peace are available tonight. If you need to respond to our Lord's invitation to be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, or to come back to your Lord and rededicate your focus and faithfulness to him, won't you please come as we stand and as we sing?